In one minute, you could go from a franchise that is irrelevant. The Houston Rockets, Portland Trailblazers. Spurs, Detroit. To set for 20 years. The number one pick in the 2023 Whoa! NBA Draft goes to the San Antonio Spurs. Their first number one pick since 1997 in Tim Duncan. What are the San Antonio Spurs getting with the Victor Wembanyama? I'm trying to win your ring ASAP, so be ready. Be ready. Strong words from Victor Wembanyama, but also smart words from a teenager who might become the greatest basketball player the world has ever seen. But what exactly does it take to become the greatest basketball player the world has ever seen? That is a question that has suddenly become very important. And luckily, there's already a blueprint of what it takes to become basketball's GOAT. Michael Jordan did it, leaving the NBA undoubtedly as the greatest. Over then competitors, Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Larry Bird, and Magic Johnson. Mike has also continued to be known as the greatest. We have seen LeBron come incredibly close, but unless something big changes, right now the consensus is LeBron James has not done enough. Which means we have real numbers to work with, and so history has shown us that if Victor Wembanyama is going to leave the game as the NBA's greatest, he would need at least four MVPs, four championships, six finals appearances, 10 all NBA first teams, and 14 all-star games. And on top of all of this, Victor Wembanyama will need early dominance. So what's up guys, Mike here, and out of the three players in the real GOAT conversation, Kareem, Mike, and LeBron, it is very clear that if Victor Wembanyama seriously wants to leave the game as the greatest to ever play, he does need to be dominant in his first five years. Looking at the first five seasons of those three players, in his first five seasons, Kareem was otherworldly. He had three MVPs and a championship, while LeBron was a two-time first All-NBA selection in his first five seasons in a much more difficult rebuild situation. In that rebuild situation, LeBron managed to carry the Cavaliers to the NBA Finals in just year four with a historic performance, scoring 29 of the Cavs' last 30 points in a must-win game five versus the Pistons that swung the series and ended up bringing the Cavs to the NBA Finals, where they were swept, but the NBA was put on notice. LeBron James was now firmly in the GOAT race. As for the actual GOAT himself, Michael Jordan was five for five in both playoff appearances and all-star game appearances in his early seasons, and also he was MVP of the entire league by year four. The Spurs are not going to have time to waste with Wemby. They're going to need to get better talent around him quickly if he is really going to be part of this GOAT conversation because. But guys, before we continue, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, DraftKings. Because of course, as we continue on, as each round passes, and as the stakes continue to get higher and higher for each team, DraftKings Sportsbook is upping the stakes for new customers. That is right, DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking you guys up. New customers bet just $5 on any pregame money line wager and receive $150 in bonus bets if that bet hits. And if you're wondering what you could use those bonus bets on, you can try parlaying multiple games together all in one bet so that you have a chance at bigger winnings. And if mobile sports betting is not yet in your state, do not worry. You can still get in the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy, where they offer cash prizes for nearly every sport. Which means right now, go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use promo code CORZEMBA, bet $5 on any pregame money line wager, and get $150 in bonus bets if your bet hits. Thank you again to DraftKings Sportsbook for sponsoring today's video. For now, let's get back into the video. Looking at Luka Doncic, he has been first team all NBA four out of his first five seasons. If he was in a different situation other than the Dallas Mavericks right now, if you switched him with Jason Tatum, wouldn't there be a chance that on Boston, Luka would have already won both an MVP and might possibly win a championship? Instead, Luka has been stuck with a horrible roster in a horrible situation in Dallas, and by no fault of his own, his basketball legacy 
has been impacted. Players are not always in control of their situations, which is a great time to add in this side note. We are respectfully leaving the great Bill Russell off of this comparison for this video as before the ABA merged with the NBA, we realistically had around nine teams in the 60s with no free agency or trading. LeBron was not battling 11 titles as his marker for the GOAT, neither will Wemby realistically. To me though, Bill Russell is the clear GOAT of the pre-merger. Meanwhile, we already know headed into the league that Wembenyama might be the actual greatest prospect ever. He is seven foot five. He's mobile. He can dribble. He can shoot threes off the dribble. He's improved tremendously year after year already. He was just named the top scorer, the top defender, and the MVP of the top professional league in France as a 19 year old. And he seemingly has that competitive dog in him that is needed to be a true Great. Look at what he did when he played potential number two pick Scoot Henderson on an American national stage for the first time. With the blow by. Oh, Wimbanyama rejected at the rim. Henderson using the screen. Blocked by Wimbanyama, his second block already. Nine on the shot clock. Blocked by Wimbanyama. Victor dominated this matchup, gave us a defining moment already. And now, because of moments like this and his continued success, Victor himself has created new expectations. He has created new rivals. And so we are looking at the three real top candidates for the greatest player of all time. And when it comes down to it, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, LeBron James, and Michael Jordan all followed a similar path. However, in order to become the NBA's actual GOAT, Michael Jordan won six titles and was the finals MVP in each win. He also was named MVP of the league five times and was second in the voting three times in 87, 89, and 97. If we were to break Jordan's career into three categories, early dominance, apex, and the glory years, we find that at each point in his career, he has made it extremely difficult to pass him. No game sevens, back to back three peats. How do you possibly top this run of dominance in the modern NBA when the talent level has risen this high? That will be quite a challenge, but already we have watched as LeBron tried to match Mike's apex and now, is still trying to make his case as the GOAT through excellence at an older age. LeBron has four titles and four MVPs, and if he were to turn back time and win another title, you could make a case that he is basketball's GOAT. You could say that he did it for longer and that that matters more to you. You could say that LeBron has more all-time All-NBAs and better record totals, such as being the leading scorer in NBA history. As of now though, LeBron has not passed Mike, although he has had his chances. When it comes down to it, if LeBron James did not no-show the 2011 NBA Finals, there is certainly a chance we would consider him the greatest of all time. That is the one mark on his resume. In the 2011 Finals against an undermanned Dallas Mavericks team, LeBron and the Heat not only lost, but LeBron also averaged only 17.8 points per game and shot only 48% from the field. There was no excuse for this. This was a 26-year-old LeBron at the height of his powers, he just did not show up for whatever reason. And it's moments like this that keep you from being the one of one greatest of all time. Seriously, even if Victor Wembanyama does have the talent to be the greatest player ever, he cannot have a bad game. He certainly cannot have a bad series. Look at what happened to the biggest contender to the GOAT before Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. Magic dominated the 1980s and was the 1990 NBA MVP. MVP. He also led the Lakers to the finals in 1991, when then he was forced to retire directly after a finals loss due to the controversy and health scare of his HIV diagnosis. If Magic had stayed healthy, he surely would have extended his resume out. But also, more importantly, if just one game had gone differently, Magic Johnson would be spoken about a lot more highly at the very least when it comes to the NBA's go. Instead, just like LeBron's 2011 final, Magic Johnson has his own mark on his resume. He has the 1984 finals. The Lakers would lose this series in seven games. And in game two, the following took place. First, James Worthy did this. Worthy will inbound to Magic Johnson. Worst comes to worst. The Celtics will have to power. There's a steal by Henderson who lays it up and in. And then with the score tied, Magic Johnson lost his head. You know, you look at that 24 second clock a lot of times. Four, I don't think he was trying to find out how much time was left. 
didn't really see it. This led to a Boston Celtics win and set the stage for game four, where after game four, Celtics fans were calling him Tragic Johnson because of the following plays. Harris steals the ball and the Celtics call a timeout. Period. Johnson misses them both. Dennis Johnson with Cooper all over him. He can't do a thing. Bird turnaround hits. At the time, Magic did not know it, but with this series, he had cost himself any chance at being the GOAT. The margin for being the best to ever do something is, of course, razor thin. And at the end of the day, while the GOAT conversation does have no hard score, what we do have is proof of what it took to become the GOAT before. And that comes in the case of Michael Jordan ending his career as the known GOAT ahead of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who was a six-time MVP, six-time title winner, 19-time All-Star, and at the time, was the NBA's all-time leading scorer. The thing is though, Kareem had most of his success pre-merger. Look at the difference here for Kareem. In the five seasons before the NBA merged with the ABA, Kareem averaged 29.9 points, 15.7 rebounds, 4.7 assists, and 3.7 blocks per night. Wildly dominant numbers. Then the NBA merged with the ABA, and a huge infusion of talent was added. 12 of the NBA All-Stars in 1977, the first all-star game post-merger were ABA players the year before. That included Julius Irving. With these new players in the league in the next five years, Kareem averaged 25.3 points per game, 12 rebounds per game, 4.3 assists per game, and 3.3 blocks per game. Still incredible numbers, but clearly one step down. Also, out of his six MVPs, only two of them came post-merger. So at the end of the day, clearly Kareem's extreme early dominance and extreme longevity did not matter as much as the fact that at his his apex, Kareem did not dominate in a three-peat with no game sevens kind of way. The GOAT needs to be in your face dominant, of course. He needs to be the greatest we have ever seen play on a basketball court. In Michael Jordan's apex, he not only pulled off his first three-peat, but also between his sixth and tenth seasons, Jordan was named back-to-back -back MVP in 1991 and 1992. Meanwhile, it was LeBron's emergence of an apex that threw him fully into the GOAT conversation. Conversation. I'm not sure LeBron's apex will ever be touched. From 2009 to 2013, LeBron won four MVPs in five seasons and also won back-to-back -back titles with the Miami Heat. If he had only just taken down Dirk and the Mavs in 2011 or Kawhi and the Spurs in 2014, LeBron might have emerged as the GOAT because his apex would have been that incredible. But because the line is that thin, because you cannot mess up at all, if you want to be known as the greatest of all time. Instead, LeBron James and Magic Johnson provide Victor Wembanyama with a warning story. To become the greatest that has ever played, you need to be ready for the moment immediately. You do not have time for second chances. You have to stare Magic Johnson himself in the face in your first ever NBA Finals and take him down. That is the legacy that Michael Jordan has left behind as the NBA's GOAT. If Victor Wembanyama is really in this race, well then the NBA is headed in a great place and I am very jealous for Spurs fans. I'm also very excited to see what Wemby is able to do. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, it would be awesome if you subscribe and turn on post notifications. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.